Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to Stats and Stilettos. Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Those highlights are courtesy of Fox Sports. Stats and Stilettos at 9 o'clock. Yeah. We are back on? at 9. No doubt. I'm yeah, absolutely. Here. I'm Maya Kai. And tonight we have two jam-packed hours. A lot of big stuff going on in the sports world here yes. this past week to um, – Recap everybody on, and we will do that from 9 to 11 here. And we would love some um, phone interaction. Bears fans, I know you're pissed out there. We want to hear from you. 773-591-1690. That is 773-591-1690. You can listen online at WVON.com. Click on the iHeartRadio icon there and get some crystal clear stats and stilettos right there in your ear. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Stats Stilettos. Like that Facebook page as well, and follow us on Instagram at Stat Stilettos. Now, yes, um, show pictures of angriness. We have to start with the um, downward spiraling Chicago Bears. But you know what? Let's 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 open up the the angriness because okay. if you look at the playoff picture as it stands right now, the Falcons and 49ers have been consistent. They're still technically at the top of the divisional round, mm-hmm. not having to be not having to participate in the wild card round. You look at the wild card round, here's the four teams after today's action that are there. The Vikings have jumped back into the mix, replacing pretty much the Bears. Mm-hmm. Green Bay is obviously there. Pretty much they've clinched the division with this win yeah, yeah, they against did. the Bears they did, tonight. Yeah. The Seahawks, which the Bears let back into this, and the Redskins. That's right now in the NFC how the playoff pitcher looks. Now the Bears are in the hunt with Dallas. The Giants, who we know every season is wishy-washy to begin with, mm-hmm. and the Rams, but not really. So the Bears have now put themselves in a position where they're technically the seventh seed ahead of Dallas, the eighth seed, the Giants, the ninth seed. The Vikings, the Vikings are the sixth-seeded team coming out the NFC. Hmm. Well, hey, you know, you're having a guy who's about to – possibly get the all-time rushing record in the NFL this year. AP. So he's on he's doing MVP and comeback player of the year type thing. So um, the Bears, they've made their own bed. You know, I hate to be cliche guy, but you know they've made their own bed right now and they got to kind of lie in it. You know, even if they win out, they're not guaranteed of getting in. I'm going to tell you something. This is how I see this. And I've tried not to be a killjoy the whole week when this conversation came up. I did not expect for the Bears to win this game. Mm-hmm. But what you ultimately saw in this game today, is that the defense has regressed back to last year. The secondary. Yeah, that secondary got. DJ Moore, up. Major Wright, Peanut Chris Tillman. Conte. Remember, Peanut Tillman looks like the Peanut Tillman of last year. And remember, at the beginning of the season, I was all over him, and then I had to shut up for a minute because for at least the first 10 games, he looked phenomenal. Do you know the Bears' defense have not scored or had a pick six since the 10th game of the season? I'm going to take it easy on Peanut, though, because he did force the fumble, and they weren't really throwing at him. They were going all day at Hayden and all day long at DJ Moore. That was their primary target right up the middle of the field. Peanut. Well, while he I'm didn't just, have a great game, he still I'm just like saying, I said, he made he made a play, which did, is something he's been he, doing all year. He did make a play, but the secondary looks like the secondary of last year. Yeah, oh yes, I FYI, agree. The rest Nick, of them, yeah. Nick Roach is not the natural. He is not a replacement for Erlacher. Mm-hmm. Let's just put that on the table. He has not lived up to expectations. You know, and you know, here's actually when you look at the defense, Julius Peppers has pretty much not been the Julius Peppers of last year. Even though this game, you heard his name at least announced twice in the game. Second and a half at least. Did he he did have a good game, but you're looking at the Bears' defense. If they're trying to make it to the playoffs, they're going to have to have some big games from Peppers. That front four and Peppers and Lance Briggs are going to have to do so much to make this work. They really are. And Henry Melton sorely missed. I mean, just, you know, why are the Bears the one team you look at that when their starters are hurt? There is no depth whatsoever. They don't have people to fill in that can kind of keep things moving forward. And you saw that this week specifically. Saw that in this game today. You know, yeah. and offensively, I'm trying to figure out why anybody thought that Karimi should be punished and benched for a portion of the game where Chris Spencer came in to fill in for him. Mm-hmm. And here's what makes no sense. Believe it or not, the O-line didn't do a shabby, li- didn't do a shabby job. Actually, did you realize that they were talking about that Aaron Rodgers is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL with 44 sacks. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that he had had so many sacks. But yet the Packers are doing what they do. But when you look at the overall, the O-line, they haven't done a ridiculous job. 
in regards to having to rotate around Lance Lewis not being in. We know that Jamarcus Webb will always do si do every game. Every game, he's spinning on the outside. But they have done a decent job because this is what you're going to get no matter what. So, what's the best sports show in radio? Well, my, can you repeat? I mean, no, I well, don't get the question. I said, what's the best sports show in radio? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. It's Stats and Stilettos, of course. Now, we're going to go around the league. I get away, I get away, I get away, I get away. <laughs> And that was the remix (laughs) (laughs) around the league. That was nice. Nice for him. This is Demond Spurl. I am your moderator for Around the League right here on Stats and Stilettos. You can follow me on Twitter at Demond's One. That's D-E-M-O-N-Z-E. One, the number one. Yeah, that was a a bad Bears game, (laughs) and uh, I don't know what to say. I'm all bulls right now. So let's go to some more. (laughs) Let's go to more. uh, It's more. Football right here. Let's go ahead and stay in the NFC North. Minnesota 36, St. Louis 22. Christian Ponder 17 for 24, 131 yards. Adrian Peterson 212 yards, one touchdown. They had Sam Bradford go 35 for 55, 377 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. And Danny Amidala 58 yards, one touchdown. Now, the reason why I go to this because, as Maya brought up early in the uh, show, Minnesota is now the sixth seed, if you want to say. They're the sixth seed. So a team that no one thought was going to be in the mix is now clearly in the wild card pitcher and probably going to make because the Bears are free falling for root. So Minnesota's stepping up and they're taking control of their own destiny. Minnesota's trying to debunk the whole way the NFL is going now with the pass first thing. They're doing this with running game and defense. And if you got a guy like Adrian Peterson, he's yeah. running. See, that's, but that's, that's right. not the threat. When the you have Adrian school. Peterson – you can dupe people into we're going to run the ball, and then when you're trying to contain him, we're going to pass it too. I mean, that's what obviously when you have an established running game and you have the likes of AP, that's it's like an Arian Foster. When you have those type of – remember, Farouk, when you made me it had to have to come yeah. to terms with uh, Matt Forte not being – really in the top ten running backs, and mm-hmm. people didn't like to hear that. And that's played itself out this year. And it's, and it's played <laughs> it, and it's played it. That's why the Bears didn't want to dole out those dollars, because mm-hmm. they realized that he really wasn't that top echelon back. When you get the Arian Fosters and the APs, you can't contain them. They can control the nature of how the game unfolds. All right. We're talking about AP. Can anybody name the last very good or even great running back to win a Super Bowl? I mean, because this team is doing it in the way where – Say the Baltimore Ravens did it a few years ago, where you don't the quarterback just don't get us killed. Trent just Dilfer, yeah. Trent Dilfer is Christian Ponder, or Christian Ponder. Well, is let's Trent be, let's Dilfer, be honest. So. But who is the last great running back to get a Super Bowl? Don't with? look. Let's let's be real about this. AP is running like out out of the out of the Metrodome or in anywhere else. But the Vikings are not going to win but, a Super Bowl. I mean, that's my point. I mean, even with a, a running back as great as this and playing really good defense as their defense is. What is this really going to get in the long run? The best of six seed in the first round knockout? It will save Leslie Frazier's job for one more season. And maybe they'll go out and they'll, they'll get some. They're kind of like how the Bears were last year. They don't have a wide receiving core. They, they no, actually, they don't. They actually they don't. offloaded quite a bit mm-hmm. in the offseason. Mm-hmm. So because they don't have that, this will give Frazier one more season. They'll go out and probably get some players in the receiving core because the running game is pretty well established. Mm-hmm. Harvin has been injured, so you put him back in the mix, and you don't know how this might go overall. But it'll just get Les- Leslie Frazier one more season to say we were injured, we don't have a receiving core. That's all this does for the Vikings. Does, does anybody see Terrell Davis as a quote-unquote great running back? Yeah, for that little stretch of time he was. I yeah. think he's quite fabulous. Yeah. Wow, come at on. That, at, that, at, that <laughs> at that point in time, <laughs> point in time <laughs> when he was playing, he was unbelievable. He was. He was. He, he was really unbelievable. Was unbelievable. I think he's the, like, the last truly like really good or great. I was going to say Edgerton so. James, but he wasn't on the coast when they won. Right. right. So I can't think. I can't really I, think. I'm never going to tie. It has to be Terrell Davis, yeah. right? Yeah, it has to be. I can't think. And here's right the thing: now. The, the Vikings' defense has done just enough to keep them in the mix, which is interesting. It's just enough. I mean, actually, the Vikings' defense is not a bad defense. It's, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's okay. It, it does just enough to get the job done. But like I said, this just buys them another year to get additional components to be a better team, which then will make the NFC even more cluttered. Than it already is. But if they did have Person Har- Percy Harvin for the remainder of this who season, they? Oh, they, they, it, it, it would have had a little bit better of a chance in the playoffs. Who was the fellow yeah. that gave up? Who was there a year ago? I'm just drawing a blank on his name because he was like, "You say my name this way." 
And I'm not even sure where he went because he's obviously been clubbed. Sidney Rice? No, he's al- he's already what been. What a Roma should do. You ain't talking about no, him. No, 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 no. He left and went to another team, and he's been quiet, obviously, all season because we Oh, but Sante Shenko. Oh, yeah, he's up in uh, New England. Yeah, my thing is that you put him back on this team this season, and that might change the complexion of how they look. Interesting. Minnesota, wow, who would have thought that? Here's another team you wouldn't have thought would have made it this far. Washington, 38, Cleveland, 21. Kirk Cousins filling in for RG3, 26 for 37, 329 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Alfred Morris came in with 87 yards and two touchdowns. You had Brandon Whedon, 21 for 35, 244 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. And you had Trent Richardson go for 28 yards and two touchdowns. Now, Cleveland was actually on kind of a winning streak. They had about two or three games. It was playing pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I actually thought they was going to give Washington some uh, a little run for their money. But Kirk Cousins, wow, coming in and not missing a beat. And listen, as I said last week, uh, Shanahan came out, say, like a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a couple of weeks ago, about four or five weeks ago. Yeah, you all are just basically playing for spots now. But look at this. They haven't lost they, since. They haven't lost since. And now they're in the playoff hunt or in right now. You know what's so distressing about this? As you look at the likes of Kirk Cousins, who comes in, and is more than, you have to say, he's more than, at this point, a game manager. Now, granted, it is against the Cleveland Browns. But he's a rookie, though. And Cleveland, the Cleveland defense is not bad either. No, Cle- actually, Cleveland has always had a decent defense. Yes. But the Bears can't seem to find a single person as, as a number two or three It's called GM and Aya. It's called GM and. But no. Okay, but a lot of people. Evaluating talent. No, but a lot of people were very high on Campbell. And I said, I'm not sold because he, as a starter, he wasn't impressive in Washington or with the Raiders. So I wasn't overly impressed. He was better than what they had. I'm just saying. Kirk Cousins, for what it's worth, has done a great audition for it. He knows RG3 is going to be the future of the Redskins. Mm-hmm. But, why? If you're, but if you're looking if you're looking for a quarterback, Another he's... Another Matt Flynn? But why would they let him go? Like I said, he's only a rookie like RG3. I keep both of these guys together. This him, is great you'll, insurance. You'll they, keep he, him as long as you can. Yeah, but when he gets an opportunity to maybe break out and be a starter... Oh, he, yeah, he's gone. Like Castle and other places, he's going to do or you go, Or you trade him for something. He has value. Exactly. He has value. You trade him for something. Because you expect for RG3 to be healthy through the stretch of his career. Mm-hmm. You, you expect for the adjustments to be made and for him to make better decisions. I mean, he's already shown that he, he has really been worth his weight as a rookie. But you expect for him to be healthy. So, he, you're right. He has trade value at oh, this point. Oh, definitely. definitely. But you know what? For, I, I got to go. I, I didn't even look at all of the other lines. But I said, you know, when you look at the likes of – I felt that Pierre Garçon was such a good addition – to the Redskins for RG3. You know, the, the, the Redskins are not a bad team. When you they've, The Redskins have had talent for a number of years. It just didn't seem to be on the same page. They needed a quarterback. So you've got Moss and you've got Garcon, and they're, they're able to spread things out, which I think in a way makes them dangerous. And you're still talking about Royster, who hasn't quite gotten to that development level that you mm-hmm. expect for him to be at yet. Mm-hmm. So it's like, to me, this might be a season that has promise, but next season might be even better. Right, and we forget about the young guy, Leonard Hankerson. That's right. He's yeah. been getting down. Guy from Miami. So I mean, if you look at their, their yardage, they have literally spread the ball out across the board, That's which the in a way can it. make you rather dangerous, not knowing where the ball is going to go. Does it remind you of the old Denver Broncos? Mm. Talk about those new Denver Broncos. Oh. All right, you know Yeehaw. what? Good segue. Let's go in here and talk about them guys. <laughs> Denver, 34, Baltimore, <gasps> 17. Boo. Peyton Manning, 17 for 28, 204 yards, one touchdown. No Sean Moreno. 118 yards with one touchdown. Joe Flacco, 20 for 40, 254 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. And you had Dennis Pita, 125, 125 yards, two touchdowns. Now, for Denver to go into Baltimore, I mean smack them around. Wow. This makes a this is a huge statement for the Broncos. Now, I believe they're in the second seed right now, but if New England wins, which they look like they're not going to win, uh, they would have a tiebreaker. But Denver, 11 to 3 right now, looking great for Root. I mean, Maya's been tracking me. He's been, she's been calling it all season. I, I know y'all didn't want to give my husband any credit. I am a Peyton Manny fan. I hate I am. I am I, you know, I'm indoctrinated. I'm, I'm just indoctrinated, period. I mean, they have been the most consistent team, believe it or not, for what it's worth. Nine wins in a row. Over the last nine games, nine they have been the most row. consistent team. And right now, you're right. They're sitting in the divisional round with the Texans. Mm-hmm. They're the two seed. They're two seed, yeah. I, I'm not going to say anything else except, you know, you've got Von Miller, who's been going off, Eric Decker, Peyton Manning, wherever he goes, he makes people better. And that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. You had a so-so quarterback throw a big interception right before halftime against a defense that was hurt. Well, with, well no, excuse me, with a tone of team with a defense that was hurt. 
and kind of tail spinning at the end of the season. Am I talking about the Ravens or the Bears? <laughs> I'm talking about the Ravens. <laughs> wow. But the only difference is the Ravens are in a division where they lost and they still clinched the playoff spot because right. Pittsburgh lost. Right. Well, y- so. You know, this gets back to Joe Flacco makes everybody – he's kind of like a Tony Romo. You, you feel there's that talent there. That's a good there. comparison. You feel mm-hmm. there's a talent. You can't blame everything on him per se. That was a horrible interception. Yeah. No, you're right. You it, was ugly. it was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it was ugly. It was. It was. Pick six. It that, was. That, that was ugliness. Yeah. But it, it's like D said, for Denver to go into Baltimore – and actually, this was a game I was concerned that they may not win. That was this is a I, felt, I felt this was really like one of those litmus test wins. Like if you win in Baltimore, you are you are on it. Are you gonna make me beat this guy? Beat it. Go ahead, beat it. Because I'm I'm a beater right there. Go ahead, beat it. Beat it. This is only their second win against a team with a winning record. But I, I, like Hell, all that all that stuff I just up. mentioned, all the stuff I just mentioned also plays a factor. Hold up. A so-so quarterback against a hurt defense, a team that's been kind of tail spinning Look. themselves lately. They backing into the playoffs yeah. today. You could say that same conversation about the Bears, the games, the games they should have won. I just made the comparison between the saying, two teams. But the difference is Denver <laughs> is sealing the deal, and you can't be mad about that. They're winning the games that they're supposed to win, bottom line. They're winning the games they're supposed to win, and you can't be mad about that. Because if you go back and look at the Bears' record and look at who they really beat, you wouldn't be all that impressed if you think about it. Denver as well. But – <laughs> but, difference. As well. but they're winning those games. Winning, but no, no, and, winning them, said, and winning them far and away, just like blowing, like blowing, like the doors change. off the barn. But I that's mean, what the Bears were doing as well. I mean, to me, obviously, they're Denver is better. They have Peyton Manning, okay. so they're okay, a better that's team. All, but stop. That's all I needed you to but, say. Because that's all <laughs> I needed. Let, let's see what happens when Denver plays some real teams. Okay, that's and all I'm saying. Because you know they've lost to real teams. You know what? There's going to be a point in time for it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to need you to bow down to greatness. Because <laughs> Peyton Manning is, part, is a football god. And I'm going to ask you to bow down, and you're going to do it. Let's, and that's let's, going to be let's it. see him play a real team. Then okay. I'll bow down, beat a real team. I can't team. even believe that you would question that he has the, the nah. ability to, to be competitive. I'm talking about the team as a whole. Peyton I, Manning is great. I love Peyton, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning has made – look. think about what Denver did last year with Tim Peyton Tebow. Manning doesn't play defense. Though. Think about it. Think about it what they did with Tim Tebow last year. They're all that much better with a real quarterback. And you can tell by how they play games, they are feeling where they are. I feel where I am, too, if I'm 11-3. That's what that's I'm confidence. saying. That's confidence. That's confidence. I mean, he it's has given high. them confidence that they – it's just a different mindset. If Jay Cutler could do that – and I like Jay. He's a little prima donna self. He's so drama. But he doesn't – I don't think he makes them – I don't think he makes the Bears team – confident in ability because he's not confident in them that's my point and I think confidence at that quarterback spot is why so many teams right now like Washington is feeling where they are because of RG3 mm-hmm. you know the Colts and, and Andrew Luck I think they they have given them something to believe those in those positive vibes Jay where are those positive vibes yeah, we don't have yeah, any we need to go have a, a kumbaya <laughs> session or something let's go back into the <laughs> NFC y'all uh, Dallas 27 Pittsburgh 24 and that was an overtime win mm-hmm. Tony Romo 30 for 42 341 yards two touchdowns he had Des Bryant go for 59 59 yards and one touchdown Ben Roethlisberger 24 for 40 339 yards two touchdowns two touchdowns and that one interception came in the wrong yeah. time wrong time and uh, Heath Miller had it one touchdown too so Pittsburgh who's usually a staple in the playoffs. It's like they're not even going to make it. And now here it is, another team the Bears led back into the playoff hunt, the Dallas Cowboys. Well, who we all thought was not going to make it. They look like hot trash. I'm not even going to give them the it. credit to say garbage. <laughs> they look like hot trash. And all of a sudden, they're back in the hunt now. Well, now the thing with Dallas, though, if the Bears wound up tied with them, the Bears will beat them out because the Bears beat them. Bears beat them. Right. So and Dallas is going to win the division yes. to get in. But, yeah, they've risen from yeah, the dead, did. though. Yeah, so. but they're – they're eight second, six. right? They're second in the division right now, right? They're all tied, I believe. All tied, now. right? Everybody but they all been beating up six. each other. Yeah, the Bears, exactly. the Cowboys, and the Giants are all eight and six. Right, and the Redskins are eight and six there with that NFC right, East right, thing. Right. So, the Cowboys are going to win that division though. Tuesday they they right. can't get a wild card. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get the wild card. But yeah, they, like I said, like we were saying, they have risen from the dead. Romo was awful. Had the hor- a whole lot of interceptions against the Bears, and then he came back with a five interception game after that, and it was looking like it was time for him to go. Possibly down well, there in saying, Dallas. The Bears just might trip and let Dallas into the playoffs. We no, like I to be surprised. We because like we, we like to believe that they're going to beat the Cardinals, but I tell you, Detroit is the spoiler. So let's just say Dallas goes out 
and wins their remaining games, which I'm not gonna say is is it's possible because mm-hmm. you see their last they have? their remaining games are the Saints, which probably and the Redskins. They end Ooh. up That's gonna be a two, war. two real hard games Ooh. for them to win. And I'm be honest, and a division game. I don't think they can win both those games. I think the Saints will love to be a spoiler, and the Redskins they can beat the Saints. The, the, you know, the, the, what really? They can. I'm not guaranteeing that by any means. The well, Saints, Saints are you very capable You don't know team. which Saints team's going to show yeah, up. And the Saints defense is, is bad. But offensively, they can put points on the they board, can. and that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. But the Redskins, they're hungry. I mean, so they, they're going to want. That's going to be a war. That, that's going to be a war. They're going to try to maintain. So, mm-hmm. unfortunately for the Cowboys, their remaining games is a toughie. That's, you know, even the Giants. they got to play the Ravens and then the Eagles. The, the Eagles, Giants? Yeah. The Eagles are – that's a win. I don't know what they, – they didn't <laughs> – they didn't, they didn't clip their wings. Uh, they're, they're, but then you say they have to play the Ravens, though, But right? that's next Sunday's Ravens, game, right. Right. So, well, I mean – The Ravens could be resting. They're at, in the playoffs. If you look at teams that are in the hunt with the Bears, the Bears have the Cardinals and the Lions. That's a 50-50 split because I tell you that the Lions are going to be a spoiler for the Bears. Don't even and care it's about Arizona. In Arizona. Don't, care, care, don't, right, don't Arizona. Arizona. Uh, right. I'm not <laughs> – Oh, oh, oh. What did we just say? Arizona is going to beat them. I already called this. The Bears are going 8-8. Eight eight. They're done. They're not gonna. We might. We'll be lucky if we win another game. Mark wow. that tape. That is so ridiculous that we even They're say this. Eight eight. It's, but I, it's, <laughs> actually, it's not because I've I've already kind of talked about this at the beginning of the season. <laughs> so it is what it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm not shocked that this is going on. Mm-hmm. Man, it's sad to see though. Sad to see. Let's go ahead and talk about the Giants. Atlanta 34, Giants zero. Taps. Can you say tap that? Man, Matt Ryan. I'm not gonna call you Matthew today. Matt Ryan, 23 <laughs> for 28, 270 yards, three touchdowns. He had Julio Jones, 74 yards, two touchdowns. Eli Manning, 13 for 25, 161 yards, two interceptions, and you have Dominic Hickson with 80 yards. Now, as we said before, the Giants are this Jekyll and Hyde team. You never know what's going to happen. They were the leading division. Now they're, I believe, they're out of the playoffs. Yeah, right? Washington. Is Washington took their spot. Yeah. And yeah, now you have right. Atlanta. You know, a big bounce back win against a team who destroyed them in the playoffs as well. So where? In the playoffs. And who are we talking about? Atlanta. So can't count them. Do it in the playoffs. Thank you. That's all that matters with this game. Well, the, here's the part. <laughs> but they knocked out the I'm team, gonna, I guess, <laughs> to put them out of playoffs last year. You know year, what's so. so crazy about, and it, I, don't, I don't know if it's just a family thing, it seems like the Manning brothers can't ever be both on a, an upside. At it the same seems, time? At the same time. It's like when one is up, one is down. Yeah. So for, for the Giants to not be able to score. Nothing. A sing, not even a field goal. Right. Is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, but this is so typical of, of the Giants that they, they come apart at the seams at the wrong part of the season. Mm-hmm. And then Coughlin is like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have this job. And it gets all animated. But, I, you know. They come back and win the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> right. I, I'm still not. Farouk, I'm with you. I, I know it's probably wrong to say this. I, I'm not convinced that Atlanta, even though they have a big win against a team that obviously is a good team, for, for what it's worth, it didn't seem that way t- tonight, that – I'm not convinced that they take they run away with this. I don't feel that way. Yeah, they, they might have caught the um, Giants at the right time. That's all. And then the Giants were in a worse position last year. They were seven and seven, and looked like they weren't even going to make the playoffs. And they went on one Super Bowl. Yeah. So this game means nothing, honestly, because Atlanta did this. Have been doing this for the last two, almost three years to people, and, and then actually, they get in the playoffs and get bum rush. No, do it in the playoffs. Score a whole two points. In yeah, the playoffs. do it in the playoffs. <laughs> It's yeah, but I have I do have to say it was a it was a loss for the Giants that was if you would have told me they would score nothing I'd be like come on to score zero is absolutely just that's that's insane and and for Atlanta sitting at twelve and two obviously they're the, they're the the one seed in the NFC and for what it's worth they're kind of on cruise control sort of Who they got next? the Lions. And then they finish up the season with the Buccaneers. The San Francisco 49ers would destroy the Falcons. Any stadium in San Francisco or in that dome. I, they kill them. You know, well, you know how I feel about that. They would so, kill them. You know, that's, that's my kill. I know. I, 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 I totally agree with that. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that because you know how I feel about the 49ers. So, I mean, I feel they have faltered a little bit this season, but I really felt they were a really good team. So, but, you know, I, I'm telling you, I think the Lions might be up for trying to be the spoiler I mean, they can't spoil anything for Atlanta. They can't, obviously. Right. Atlanta mm-hmm. is a lock at that one seed. But, you know, they're going to do everything they can, obviously, to make things difficult for other teams. Well, let's look at the, la- let's look at the last game right here we're going to talk about. Um, the spoiler game. The spoiler teams, I should say. Arizona 38, Detroit 10. Ryan Lindeby, 14 for 21, 104 yards, one interception. 
uh, interception. Benny Wells, 67 yards for three touchdowns. Then you have Matthew Stafford, 24 for 50? Good Lord. <laughs> 246 God yards. Lord. Man. <laughs> three, three interceptions. You got Michael LaShore had 55 yards and one touchdown. I just, it just, every game is like he throws for 50 or 55 times. That's what yeah, it always jumps yeah, out yeah. to me. But this is, but these two teams, this segue to back, back to the Bears. These two teams right here can spoil it. And as I was saying before, I had a little Twitter conversation with my boy J.R. Bain. And um, he was saying, no, 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 they're going to beat Arizona. You can't lock anything right now. He said, well, maybe Detroit. Maybe, they can, maybe Detroit gave him a little run for money. Well, Arizona just went and beat Detroit. It's the first win they had in I don't know how many weeks. By the time the Bears get to Detroit, that game won't even matter. Bears will probably just, be eliminated. I was just going <laughs> to say that. They may, they may go into Detroit knowing that it has no real value. Mm-hmm. And I guess you could say that a win could – I don't know that a win would pacify any fan at this point. That you you fell so far from having a strong start to being eliminated from the playoffs two years in a row, based on your own your own inability, your own demise. You know, so I, and I look at a team like Detroit for what it's worth, how the defense is playing. The that's not a good matchup for the Bears no. in regards to they have a decent Michael Ashore has finally come on towards the end mm-hmm. of the season. Mm-hmm. He's playing he's a good solid run game. At any time Megatron will you know transform into whatever. They they've got enough going on that it, it, the Bears will have their hands full and the secondary has not playing well. Mm-hmm. I just don't I don't know if I'm even gonna watch that game because it was irritating to be at that game last year. Oh, uh, you go watch it. You know you no, gonna watch it. You go watch it. I don't, don't even lie on the airways like that. With that Bears hat on. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. So, you know, this is the actually the Bears hat I wore to the Detroit game, and it was the only Bears thing I wore. So when they lost, I took it off. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. All right. All right, let's go ahead and run down the rest of these scores. Houston 29, Indianapolis 17. Miami 24, Jacksonville 3. New Orleans 41, Tampa Bay 0. Seattle 50 points. Wow. Buffalo back-to-back seven. weeks. Back-to-back weeks. Wow. This looks like USC back in the Pac-10. Uh, Buffalo 17, Carolina 31, San Diego 7, Oakland 15, KC 0. We had Cincinnati uh, last on Thursday beat out Philadelphia 34 to 13. And last Monday you had New England beat Houston 42 to 14. And as of right now, you have San Francisco 31, New England 10. Colin Kaepernick is wow. doing his thing. And I'm going to agree. I forgot what the caller was, what his name was. But he called in and said Cal, uh, Colin Kaepernick was better than Alex Smith because they opened up the options. As you can see behind me on them, on them passes, yes, those long, them bombs are going down. Yeah. He's opening them up. And that's around the league. People down in Washington, D.C. And my, my question, honestly, friends, right? friends of mine, right, who are around in, in some of the press conferences, people I've known for a long time. But my question, which is just a straight honest question, is he a brother or is he a cornball brother? What does that mean? Yes. Well, he, he's not really, okay? He's black, he kind of does the thing, but he's not really down with the cause. He's not one of us. He's kind of black, he's in the, but, but he's not really like the guy you really want to hang out with because he's off to something. Why is that your question? Well, because that's just how I, I want to find out about him. I don't, I don't know because I keep hearing these things. We all know he has a white fiance, and we all just talking about He's a Republican, which I there's no, there's no information at all. I'm just trying to dig deeper into why he has an issue. Because we did find out with Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was like, I don't want to, don't, I got black skin, but don't call me black. Welcome back to Stats and Stilettos. Uh, with Maya and Farouk, we had a soundbite from First Take there where Ron Parker was questioning the blackness of RG3 based on he has a white fiance. He's a Republican, and he wears funny looking socks. I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> you know, which was an interesting thing. And actually, the, the, the female on the show was like, "What? Wh- what's the question?" <laughs> and he was like, "Based on you know friends I have that are in the Washington D.C. media, I, it was just such a ignorant question to even put out there because even I, I'm with her on that. Like, and your point is what? So he's a Republican. Okay, whatever." And and he's a he has a white fiance. How many NFL players, pro basketball players, whoever are married to people of other races? This is not an uncommon thing. I mean, regular people, right? I mean, are, the growing the growing contingency of, of 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 interracial marriages has grown by leaps and bounds. I mean, within this room, of all the people who have been married, they've all been involved in interracial marriages. Hmm. Fruits like hmm. Well. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I lost my thing to a white woman, but you know. Did you really? Yes. I mean, my ex-husband was white, and, I, and the <laughs> thing about it is, it, it's about how you grow up. 
I didn't. I grew up in a, a community where I was a middle class family. I went to Catholic school from birth to 12th grade. At one point in my life, I probably knew more Caucasian people than I knew black people. I remember when I, when I went to high school and I interacted with, with, with some black girls that had come from public schools. I was called an Oriole for at least four years. Of course, I got them right real quick. But I mean, I don't understand. It's, it's based upon your upbringing and what you're comfortable with and how you identify. I, I think there's this thing that everybody thinks that black people are homogeneous, which really bothers me, that we all have the same tastes, likes, backgrounds, and there's nothing diverse about us as a people because we all happen to have a similar background that we all come from. At one point, we were all slaves. And I think because of that, everyone assumes that in this day and age, there's just no diversity in how we feel and how we think and what we want. And I think that's a dangerous thought. That people just think we are so homogeneous. I, I mean, because I know that I don't identify with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Seriously, I don't. I, I look at people and I'm like, mm. like, if you ask me if I was Democratic, I'd say, well, you know, I tend to vote that way. But I, I do realize in being in that party that I get raked over the coals for not having children and not being married. I am the most taxed person in that bracket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, so there's a lot of stuff I said on air. People be like, oh, she's Ooh, for real. You would think I was anti everything. <laughs> Seriously. Mm-hmm. From a perspective of my money, I, I think a certain way. And I don't think according to race. Do you feel every decision you make is based on the color of your skin? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. I think the whole thing with this is kind of like I was saying during the before the break is a, a lot of younger, uh, the younger generation, 30 and under, they weren't raised with this type of racial animosity that no. maybe someone like a Rob Parker could have. I mean, they weren't brought up around that. They were brought up being bused to go to schools with different cultures and different ethnicities and all these type of yes. things to where why so why should he harbor these same things unless he wasn't taught this in his home like his parents were teaching him to embrace his black heritage. That's where he would then pick and then even with that. Even with that. Even with that, can- why would you not you know what? I can, pro- to- I can probably tell you more about black history than people who think they're the blackest people ever could probably ever tell you. So I don't – that was just an ignorant comment for him to make. And what's interesting is I posted that comment on Facebook, and I had a couple of, of, of people who are on my page who happen to be Caucasian. They couldn't even quite wrap their mind around the question because they were like, what does it matter? As long as – if he keeps playing this certain kind of way, their answer was about him being a quarterback in the league – they didn't get the relevancy of the question at all. And apparently he's been suspended, Rob Parker, for this. But um, I heard a good point last night, you know, just out and about on the radio. And the guy's like, if this were a white TV guy that said this, he'd be getting destroyed right now. Oh, yeah. Well, you know how that is. There's he'd always, be getting destroyed right we'll now. give you enough rope to hang yourself. But like, it was like when, but, when Stephen A. Smith made the ninja please comment, and he's yeah. still on air. But no one should be even... Say, I mean, it's cool. No, I don't. I don't want anybody saying this type of stuff because he's not black. And then Rob Parker saying something about him being in a barbershop. When the last you seen Rob Parker's hair? When the last time he sat in a barbershop? <laughs> Rob I, Parker ain't been in no barbershop. I, I just have an issue when people question the blackness of somebody because I'm like, what exactly is the definition of blackness? What does that mean? And I, I think it's something that's it, it's very misconstrued and. When you start asking people that, they can't really give you a true definition or a thought of what they believe that is. I mean, and like you said, Farouk, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. With kids being so more integrated than they've ever been, you know, here's, here's a fact. I have several friends who are like, have kids that are like now in their late teens, early, or like maybe 20, they're in college. They grew up in very like middle to upper class areas where they were very, they were pretty much a minority in their group and most of their friends happened to be Caucasian. So mm-hmm. most of the people they've ever dated have been Caucasian. So I'm like, if you put a person in that environment, what do you think is going to happen? But before we, before we are done, I want to ask you what you thought about the, the Caroline Wozniecki tennis player who when she was in a match against Marie oh, Sharapova yeah, yeah. who took and stuffed her tennis top and her tennis skirt so it looked like she had big big breast and a big butt and it seemed like she was making somehow and was like around the court like swinging her racket like somehow this was a pun towards Serena Williams did you see that video I saw that but I, I saw something on Facebook which made perfect sense they had a picture of Wozniak but next to it they had a picture of Serena and some all blonde weave looking thing on her head 
or a wig or something like that. That she had that on, and I got the I got the point right there. So did they have there, some kind of yeah? There was a captain you know, going on back and forth but, that we don't know about. But no, but um, what Wozniak said they had a quote from her like um, she well they imitate us all the time. It's, it's okay. referring to black women. Here's my question. Was Serena, was she wearing weave? Yeah, it was like, it was a picture of her. It wasn't anything that was photoshopped or anything like that. It was an actual picture. She had on a blonde, like, weave. Like, her hair was colored blonde, and then she had, like, this. I remember when she was wearing that. Okay, that's not imitating. That's. But black women's natural hair is not black. It's not weave. It's not blonde, excuse me. Okay, I'm I'm not going to go with that as an explanation. But. Because that's like saying, if that's the case, then I don't. I don't think it was racist. All black women question. were in violation because the fact that they wear weave that's nothing, but, but no. nothing like the texture of their hair. Most of I'm sorry, they. I'm in that group. Um, I just separated myself out real quick. But I don't wear weave and whatever. My hair texture is what it is. But I, I, I think that was a cop out because she she deliberately stuffed her bra and made. An inference about her physical. A lot of black women will wear weave and dye their hair different colors, and I don't think. Why though? Why? How come? Why do black women have to do that? See, I'm one of the. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black guy that hates weave. I, I hate hair color. I, and black women, I, I love black women, but I hate all of that stuff. So of, you're talking to the wrong person. Because a think, lot right of now. women think that's what's attractive. But I've long not, since. It's not. I've long since. You know what? Here's the thing. We live in a society where there's a lot of. Can I say? things that make a lot of black women probably feel defective in the way you are. Let's be honest. Natural hair is starting to come back for, for a long period of time. To have natural hair as a black woman. And those woman are the beautiful, most was, beautiful black I, women. I'm not, I'm not disputing that, but I'm just saying. That was not something. Think about it. I, I look at people who wear colored contacts. For what? Um, why? Because I think there's something in our culture that makes us feel certain things. If you can't grow long hair, then you put it on. Now, if you don't, I've never had to necessarily deal with that, per se. But I understand why people do it because of what you see consistently. And I don't think when black women do that, they are making fun of white women in any way, shape, or form. They feel like that's something that makes them more beautiful. Whether that's true or not is irrelevant. I think all of this goes back to what we're talking about with Rob Parker. I mean, it's somewhat of a – it's kind of to the slave mentality thing. The what same she, thing what with she did Rob was inappropriate. Parker. She was deliberately making fun of her physical form. But I understand that. But what I'm saying, my whole thing, I have a bigger issue with Serena, with How the so? blonde hair and all of that stuff. You don't be yourself. You don't your hair. You didn't pop out of your mom with blonde what hair. Think? I don't think Serena's ever like I was born blonde hair. You have plenty of women who will wear weaves and wigs and be like, "This is my hair," but I like the look. I like to change it up. So, so, no, so, so wait no, a minute. Don't. So my natural hair is dark brown. So if I happen right now, I dye my hair black. Does that mean I'm not happy with who I am? No, I just tried something different. I don't have a problem with it. People need to get a sense of humor. That's my I, long-winded I just felt answer. It, I, I'm sorry. I felt it was very inappropriate to be on, the, on that particular stage and to do something like that was really – because you knew what she was aiming at. And I'm like – Okay, once again, back to um, what we were saying with Rob Parker. Say it was the other way around, and Serena was doing something like her, like walking with a butt, butt clinch or something like that, like trying to imitate and Wozniak. It would be, and it would be inappropriate. Too. Okay. It would be it would be equally inappropriate okay. to me if she came out with like a long Rapunzel wig and was tossing it. I'd be like, that's ignorant. I would think it was ignorant either way. I, I don't think it's OK for people to do stuff. See, I don't think there's a double standard. Ignorant is ignorant to me, period. That and, was I think, and I thought what she did was very ignorant because you knew what she was what she was doing when she did it. There was no doubt about it. Now, if she would have walked up and cold cocked her, then she would have felt stupid. <laughs> Busted in her chops. Then she would have been being black if she would have did that. Oh, of course. Because that's what black women do. They snap their necks, they roll their eyes, and, and they bust they, you in your chops. Exactly. That's what they do. Right. All right. Thanks to Twan Staley from Marlins Nation for joining us tonight. Be sure to check out that podcast Wednesday at? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Blog, Blog Talk. Talk Radio. Stats A&D Stilettos. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for everyone to join us tonight. Also, Tamia Baker, our social producer, get better. We miss you. Hopefully we miss you're you. feeling better. So all the staff, Demond Sparrell, Malcolm Rockhold on the ones and twos, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight for helping out. We'll check you out next week at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Out of here.